Welcome to the second video on the AMD QuadFX platform, AMD's dual socket answer to Core 2 Quad back in 2006. Now if you didn't catch the first video I did on this platform, I would highly recommend watching that first, as it goes into detail on the history, so just the question of like, what is it, why it came about, and also things like an unboxing and setup of the hardware, and some tests in Windows, so do check that out first. Because in this video we'll be focusing purely on gaming performance in modern titles. Now I don't think anyone at AMD back in 2006 would have been expecting people to still be running games on it 14 years later. But what if you did? That's what I'm going to find out in this video and just what kind of performance could you expect from two dual core 90 nanometer chips in one system running modern titles with a modern GPU? First, a brief summary of the hardware. As in the first video, we have two AMD Athlon 6.4 FX74s running at 3 GHz on an ASUS L1N64-SLI WS motherboard, along with 8 GB of DDR2-800 memory. And for the GPU, we'll now be using an NVIDIA Pascal GTX 1060 3 GB. While not blazingly fast, it'll be more than adequate for a system like this. In total, we'll be looking at 9 games with DirectX 9, 11, 12, and Falcon, all running at 1920 by 1080. Starting with Dirt Rally from 2016, running in DirectX 11 with the low preset. Performance was mixed here. If we look at the single player mode, like here with the built in benchmark, it was actually very playable with performance averaging 45 frames per second, going from the low 30s to the mid 60s, with rather nice frame times. However, when going up against AI, like in this rally cross mode with three opponents, performance decreased considerably with FPS now not being able to reach over 30 most of the time, which wasn't really playable overall. Moving on to the one and only Battlefield 5 from 2018, also in DirectX 11 with the lowest possible settings. Now the multiplayer is known to be very tough even on modern CPUs, and with the FX74s this wasn't pretty. Here in 64 player conquest we're looking at an average of only 13 FPS, with all four cores at 100% utilization all the time. In quieter areas of the map, performance would increase a little bit by a few FPS, but certainly not enough to make it playable. Scaling back to 32 players, things do start to improve a bit for Quad of X, now averaging a whopping 20 FPS. Although I should definitely note that under the right circumstances, it did manage to get over 30 FPS in a few cases, making for some very brief moments of adequate performance playing Battlefield 5 multiplayer on this dual socket platform from 14 years ago. Now for something a bit lighter with Counter-Strike Global Offensive in DX9. Performance is pretty good most of the time with an average of 50 FPS in this match, but there are sometimes severe performance fluctuations as seen by the 1% and 0.1% lows. Overall I'd say it was still rather playable, but certainly not always smooth. Core utilization was also rather poor here, with all cores hanging around 50 to 75% utilization. Next up, Canadron Crisis, here with Crisis 3 on the intensive grass level of the single player, with low preset. The CPU utilization was much better overall, but the performance was rather rough with an average of 32 FPS and a 1% low of 13 and a 0.1% low of only 6. And as seen by the frame time graphs, Crisis 3 wasn't really a smooth experience. Moving on to Doom from 2016, running on the Vulcan API with the low preset. And now performance was really quite good here, averaging 55 FPS around the first level, also with rather strong 1% and 0.1% lows. Overall I'd say it wasn't terrible playing Doom on this platform overall, why it did dip down into the 30s sometimes, there weren't really many jarring spikes 
as with the other titles tested. And also core utilization was very good, with all four cores usually loaded at around 95%. Overall, pretty good. Now on to Shadow of the Tomb Raider from 2018, running in DirectX 11 with the low preset. Just like with Dirt Rally, performance varied a lot here. In the built-in benchmark, the average FPS was only 26, with the system dropping all the way down to the mid-teens in certain scenes. However, the benchmark really shows some worst-case performance scenarios. For example, when there are a lot less NPCs, like in the first level of the trial, performance was, well, excellent. Here's some footage of the first level where you can see that when Lara scales the wall, it's running great at over 50 FPS. So it really does depend on scene per scene basis. Next up was the latest title in this test, World War Z from 2019. Like Doom, it also runs on Vulcan. And performance was mixed here with an average of 33 FPS, which heavily relies on the amount of zombies that are on screen. In quiet areas, it's rather decent. But when there is a massive horde coming, it all quickly becomes too much for the old quad effects, and it dips down into the mid-teens. Second to last is Hitman 2, playing on the beach house level, running in DirectX 11 with the low preset. Just like in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, as long as there aren't many NPCs, the performance is good, averaging 57 FPS with decent 1% and 0.1% lows. This mission ran very well overall in this system, with great core utilization and steady frame times. However, if we go back to the original Hitman, which runs on the same engine, and we go to the Yacht mission with tons of NPCs, the performance quickly drops down to below 30 FPS, so I certainly wouldn't expect that 57 FPS average to be indicative of all situations. And finally, we'll make a return back to Grand Theft Auto V from 2013, with all the settings at normal. Here the quad effects managed a decent 39 FPS, and while the 1% and 0.1% lows weren't fantastic, the general playability was rather good. Core utilization was good across all four cores, and frame times were yeah, sort of acceptable. Overall, I would say I'd be quite happy playing GTA V on this system. And there we go, here's how a quite broad selection of modern games run on the AMD Quad FX platform. Now back in 2006, one of the criticisms of Quad FX was that for gaming it wasn't actually faster than AMD's previous flagship, the Dual Core Athlon FX62. And that was mostly because games just simply didn't utilize all those cores. However, a lot has changed since then, and now practically all titles. Um, fully make use of those four cores, and as you've seen in some cases, performance can still be quite good despite the age of the chips. Games like GTA V, Doom and Hitman 2 run quite well and sort of console level experience if you like. However, in other cases, say like uh, Battlefield V, there's simply not much that can be done considering the age and performance of the chips. Well. I hope you have enjoyed this video, I really enjoyed putting it together and seeing just what kind of performance you can get from a system as old as this, and I hope you did as well. If you did, a like would be much appreciated, and if you want to be kept up to date on future projects, why not consider subscribing? If you have a comment also, please do leave one, I'm curious to know your thoughts. Well, that was all for now, and bye bye.